Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is August 7th. The year is 2023, and this is a special YouTube premiere, which means I'm live with you right now in the chat. And guess who's back? That would be Gina Holly. She's here moderating with me tonight. We'd like to give her a big welcome back. Tonight, I am going to teach you how to make an interlocking, expanding accordion Funfold card, but in easy steps. You're going to love this card because it has so many features. And you want to talk about a table display? Holy cow, this is definitely one of those cards they're going to want to keep forever. Now, you're going to want to make sure you grab that free project sheet. That's going to be down in the video description below when tonight's premiere is all over. That has the pictures, the cutting dimensions, the supplies, and a template for tonight's project. So, you're going to want to make sure you grab that. I've already introduced you to Gina Holly, but I just want to make sure that you know if you're here in the live chat that she's here to interact with you and to help provide you links as well as I am. I'm here live, so please ask me questions. I would love to answer them for you. If you're watching the replay, I come back and I read every single comment. We make sure that your questions get answered, so we're so glad that you are here. And then finally, if you want to chat or comment, YouTube does require that you log into your YouTube account which uses your Gmail address. So go ahead and do that now. All right, I'm gonna tell you one thing before we get started. There is an in-person event with myself and the entire Stamp Studio team that we're gonna to talk to you about when tonight's demonstration is over. I would love to meet you, so stay tuned. All right, let's get started. There are gonna be several pieces of cardstock for this card. This is Knight of Navy, and this is going to be the base. This is five and a half by 12. Now don't fret thinking you've got to write down all the cutting dimensions and the scoring dimensions. I've got all those for you in the project sheet. So I'm going to come in with my paper trimmer. This is my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, which I absolutely love. It includes both the scoring blade, which is the light one, and the cutting blade. They navigate up and down out of the way. That clear track is a champ. You're going to love it. So let's go ahead and open that up and we're going to do our first score lines on this piece. The first one is at four inches and I'm using that ledge right against the top here that's going to keep things nice and straight. And then we are going to score. And then I'm going to move this over to eight inches. Here comes that extendable arm, which I love for these 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. Lining that up at the eight and we are going to score. Okay, so this is one of the pieces that we're going to need, but we're going to need several others. This is three and a quarter by eight and a half three and a quarter by nine. We're gonna score them relatively the same. This one obviously is gonna get an extra score line. So this one, let me go ahead and close that up. This is gonna be scored at two and three quarters of an inch. Again, using that ledge because I don't do anything straight and we're gonna score. And then we're gonna move over to five and a half. And then we are going to score again. I'm gonna set that off to the side. This is the longer one, that's nine inches. We're gonna score at two and three quarters and then five and a half, sounds familiar, right? And this last one is all the way over at eight and a half because we only need a small area here at the end to give a place for the adhesive. All right, now that we've got those all scored, what we're gonna do next is we are going to connect these. Now this is very important as part of the step is concerned. Now I know this is gonna be difficult for you to see, but this is that half inch score line right here. You may notice that there's two sections here that are slightly wider than the other two. And let me just bend on those so you can kind of see them. So these are three inches wide where the rest are two and three quarters. These wider pieces need to be towards the center. Otherwise this fold's not gonna work properly. So right here on that little half inch area, I'm bending it so you can see it. This is where our adhesive is going to go to connect these. So let's go ahead and bring in that silicone craft sheet. I love this because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which means if I get a little excited with my adhesive or my glue, I don't have to fight with that sticky spot on my table the whole time. This is going to create the interlocking portion. So let's go ahead and just line those up. You don't want to overlap that score line. You want to come right up to it. And I'm looking here and here to see if they're even, and then we're going to press. All right, I'm going to keep this flat for now because I want to come in and I want to decorate these panels. Now let's talk about the base of the card first because this is what's going to work in between it. Let's push that off to the side. Now the card base itself is going to be very, very important how do you score it. And I creased it a little bit to begin with to make it easier for you. This very first score line here on the left has to be what we call a valley fold, which means it's going to come in and it's going to go down. 
please reinforce those with your bone folder, checking your edges to make sure they're even. This one is going to go to the back, which is what we call a mountain fold, which means it comes to a peak. And we're gonna go over that with the bone folder. But this in itself is not gonna be long enough for that long strip that we just made that's going to pass through the interlocking portion. So this is where you're gonna to need to add one more piece of cardstock. This is four and a half by five and a half. I'm bringing back in the trimmer. And on the five and a half inch side here, we are going to score at a half an inch. That's gonna give us a place to put that adhesive. I'm gonna crease up on this just so that you can see it a little bit better. It's gonna to go to the left side for my card. And then what I'm gonna do is flatten it and I'm gonna add some adhesive. Now the Stamp and Seal Plus is very, very strong. You're gonna to wanna to make sure if you're using it, you don't press too hard. It dispenses very easily. And just like we did before with the interconnection, we are looking to come right up to, to the score line, but we are not going to surpass it. And then we're gonna attach that in place. So now we have the length that we're gonna to need to create the accordion for this expanding card. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna do some die cutting to create the windows that we need. And I'm just gonna make this flat so it's easier for you to see. You're gonna to need to use some dies that are in graduated sizes. Let me show you the ones I'm using tonight. I'm using these, the Countryside Corners, one of my favorites. I love layering dies, and that's what you're going to need for this fun fold project. What you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the smallest one is going to pass through the accordion portion that we just put together, which means it's gonna fit like this. If it does, you can use any shape that you want and wait until you see those other cards I have for you. Now I'm gonna teach you the super easy way to do this. You're gonna to look to center this visually on top of the cardstock within these score lines. Now, if you're persnickety, you can go ahead and get a ruler out, but I do most things just visually. And obviously, this is gonna slip and slide, so we're gonna to need to tack that in place. And my favorite way to do that is with the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. Now, you're gonna find this on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites, obviously not a Stampin' Up! product, but I have bought this like two years ago and it's still lasting me. Go ahead and just rip off some, and the good news is you can use this over and over, which is what we're gonna to do tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gonna visually center this, and I'm gonna tack it down here, and I'm also gonna tack it down here because we don't want that to wiggle. If you're really particular, and I know some of you are, grab your ruler, measure from here to here, and you can see if they're even, and these are pretty close, and then here to here on both sides. And then you can shift this which way you want. I'm good with it visual, honestly. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this through the die cutting machine. I'll be right back. I've just die cut it. I always like to check from the back because every die cutting machine is persnickety, so this is a tip for you. Make sure it's cut all the way through because if it's not, guess what? It's anchored in place and you can do it again. I'm gonna carefully remove that tape because we're gonna reuse it. I'm gonna move this die off to the side and this you can save for another card. But I'm gonna put this tape right here because we're gonna come back to it. We need a window here as well. Easiest way, fold it back on top of itself and grab your pencil. Now I get lots and lots of comments about this pencil because the lead is super soft and the eraser works fantastic. It's also linked for you in my craft room favorites. So I know this is gonna be difficult to see because it's dark cardstock, but I'm gonna create a pencil mark by tracing the inside circumference of what's already die cut there. Now I know we're gonna to have to die cut it from the back, but that's okay because it's not a stitch die. If this was a stitch die, instead of going like this, you're gonna to have to go like this and trace it. And the reason is, is you want all your stitchings to be on the front. All right, let's go ahead and take that die once again. This is the exact same one we just used and we are gonna line this up I'm looking for the inside circumference of the die to match my pencil marks. Once I'm happy with it, let's go ahead and we're gonna tack that in place and we're gonna die cut this panel now. I've just passed this through my die cutting machine once again, checking to make sure that it's good and cut. And we're gonna take off that tape, which we are gonna use again, another piece for us to use in the future. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over because obviously I want the seam on the back. So here is the front of my card but I wanted designer series paper. Now I cut four panels for this. So obviously two are gonna go here, but I want two here. And you're probably thinking, well, how's that gonna work? Not only is it gonna work, it's gonna create a gorgeous frame. Watch how we're gonna do this. 
What we're going to do is we're going to start with the first one and please make sure all your patterns are going in the same direction. You're going to put the designer series paper over the top. What you're looking within these score lines here is that it's fairly even. So you've got a little bit of that border around the top and bottom and in between your score lines. When you're happy with it, I want you to tack it in place. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the next thing, making sure my pattern is going the same way and we're going to grab some more tape. Now, obviously, you could do these one at a time, but I like doing things the easy way, so I'm just going to do them at the same time. Again, I'm looking for that border, and what I'm trying to do is get this ledge across the top about even. This project has tons of forgiveness. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over this way. I want you to put an L for the left and an R for the right so that when you're done, you know which one goes where because they're not perfectly symmetrical depending on how you space these panels. Then you're going to take your pencil and you're going to trace the inside circumference. Now I switched over to my silver colored pencil that you all love, hoping that you can see it a little bit better. Now I've got this link for you too on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. All right, we're going to flip this back over and then we're going to remove the designer series paper by just lightly moving all those pieces of the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. Don't throw this away. These are good to use over and over again. You can put them on the handle of your die cutting machine or right back here on the cartridge. All right, now we're ready to do some die cutting, but this time we're going to use the slightly larger die in that cascading size. So I am going to line this up looking to leave a border around the pencil mark. And again, I'm just going to do this visually. You're going to come back to your post-it labeling and cover-up tape, and you are going to tack this in place. So we're going to do one here and one here. You're going to do the exact same thing on this one as you will do on this one. Remember, you've got your left and your right. I'm going to hold this up, hoping you can see that pencil mark there a little bit on camera. But let's go ahead and let's die cut these now. So I'm removing the post-it labeling cover-up tape and I'm keeping it here so that I know that's my left. And then we're going to take this one and we're going to do the exact same thing, looking to create that nice little border all the way around. And then once we're happy with it, we're going to tack that down as well and we'll die cut this one. Here now is the right panel. And again, we're going to save that tape and we're going to leave that panel here to the inside so that we have an idea of which one is the right and which one is the left. Now that we've got these all done, we're going to bring that card base back in and now we're going to work on these panels. This is the L, which is the left side. So you're going to save that for another project. We're going to flip this upside down. I'm going to look here and I'm like, yep, that looks about right. You see that nice little border? If you like liquid glue, go for it. Just for the sake of the premiere tonight, I'm going to go ahead and use adhesive because I know this is real strong. The advantage to liquid glue is that you have a little bit of wiggle room, which obviously I do not have with adhesive. So please keep that in mind. Use your silicone craft sheet. You're going to absolutely love that in your craft area because it's going to keep all the glue off of your work surface. We're going to come back to here. And before I stick it down, I'm just going to make sure that I've got it going the right way. And I've got my nice little frame all the way around. And I'm looking to center this. And then we're going to attach that in place. This now obviously is the right side. We're going to go ahead and save that and we're going to do the exact same thing. So my little arrows need to be going up. So this should fit nicely as it does. I've got that little frame around my die cut. So we're going to go ahead and add adhesive here once again. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe. We would love to have you get notifications when I'm here on YouTube. If you hit the subscribe button, there's a little bell icon right there and you can click the word all so they'll send you notifications. All right, looking to leave that same margin the best I can all the way around. And then once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and tack that in place. But look at now we've got a frame around those windows. So we're going to take these two, making sure our pattern is going in the same direction. Let's go ahead and add our adhesive here. While you're over my website at lisastampstudio.com, go ahead and click on the shop drop down. You're going to find that I have a very vast PDF tutorial library there, and that's going to give you lots and lots of more options. Lots of stamps that you may already have. There's multiple tutorials in every single one of those payable downloads, and I only charge $1 per page. That includes multiple pictures of every card, instructions, cutting dimensions, and a complete supply list. Remember that card tutorials are a great mapping for you to start creating on your cards. Checking that pattern once again, 
and this is that last panel all the way here to the left side of your screen, looking to work between that score line here and the edge of the cardstock. Now we're going to work on the panels that are going to go to the inside. Remember this? So the connection point, I obviously want to be in the back because it's not real pretty. Best time to decorate it is when it's nice and flat. We've got some designer series paper here. Now you're gonna recall that these were three inch squares where these were slightly smaller. So keep that in mind in your project sheet, there's different dimensions for these. Now I did some of this ahead of time, but I wanna to talk to you about the stamp set I use and how you can use it easily. So I'm gonna bring in some basic white cardstock here and let me show you the stamp set that we are going to be using. It's actually a bundle. It's called So Refreshing. I have used it once before. It's got coordinating dies. It's gonna make your life nice and easy. You can have lemonade, pink lemonade, strawberry lemonade. You can have fruit punch. You can even put wine in there. Or guess what? You could turn this into iced tea because there's an adorable little tea bag die here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do some stamping and this is all done ahead of time. So I just wanna give you the components on how to create this. The very first thing I'm gonna start with is my Night of Navy ink pad. Now I typically use black when I'm using an outline image I decided I wanted to play up the colors in the designer series paper. We're going to bring in a pop of color here. So I'm going to ink this up in my Night of Navy and we're going to stamp that here. If you love to color, stamp that in your Mento Black ink pad and use your coloring medium of choice and you are all set. Now, no lemonade is any good without a couple people to share it with. So we're going to go ahead and stamp two glasses side by side. I am leaving a little bit of room here specifically because I have dies for all of these. Yes, there's one for each glass. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some greenery to this. And so let's bring in that granny apple green, which is what I'm gonna use for my stem. I'm gonna maximize that scrap, so I'm gonna turn this. Now you're gonna notice there's some break points inside the stem. Now I wanna give you some tips on using it because I had to figure it out and I wanna make it easy for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that here. Again, separate dies. And this time I'm going to switch over to the outline florals. Now I want you to know that the little bud is going to fit down here and the blooms are going to be at the top. When we ink this up, I'm going to talk you through how to navigate this. This little corner is going to fit down inside of here. This corner is going to fit inside of here. And these other pieces are going to fit inside of here. So let's go ahead and ink that up. And let's remember you can navigate this. Now I'm doing my head my best to keep my head out of your camera view. And then I'm looking and we're going to stamp. That didn't turn out very good, did it? All right, let's do this again. You think that everything here in the studio is perfect? Let me just tell you it is not. I make mistakes too. Here is our stem. And let's come back in with the blue. I think that learning together is half the fun of stamping, right? Okay, I'm looking to make sure that this little bud right here falls in between here. And once you're happy with it, you're gonna go ahead and stamp. Okay, much, much better than this one. Now I did do this several times, but there's also a fill image for this. So let's go ahead and let's move these out of the way. And I'm gonna switch over to Boho Blue. Now I chose this color simply because it's reminiscent of the designer series paper. So let's go ahead and open that up and I'm going to ink this up. And I thought this was gonna be a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna bring in my scratch paper and I'm gonna stamp off a layer of ink. Did you know that one ink pad will typically produce several shades of the same color? So that's a good tip for you so that you don't have to buy ink pads that are closely related. And then this is just like a puzzle. So all you have to do is just line up the images and then stamp and then they're beautifully filled. Now we need a couple things to kind of make this look like lemonade. So we are gonna switch over now to the Daffodil Delight ink pad. I'm gonna open that up and here comes the fun part. There is a fill image for this inside the stamp set. And I'm gonna ink this up as well. And this time I'm gonna stamp off. Never stamp off over a previous color because it's probably wet, which means you're gonna pick up the pigmentation. And then this is gonna go inside. Now I stamped it off for a reason. I'm just cleaning that off camera. That's because there's these adorable little lemon slices that I wanna to add to my picture. So I'm gonna put one here, I'm gonna put one a little lower, and then one up here. And I'm going to want a couple extras because wait till you see what I do with those. And then I'm going to show you how to use the lemons. They're pretty much the same way. It's a fill image. So we've got the lemon here. I'm going to stamp one 
and then I'm going to switch over now to the solid and I want it lighter. This is the beauty of being able to stamp off is that you're able to create several shades of the same color. Really cute. Now that you have an idea on how to use this, and obviously there's a fill image for this as well. I probably should have showed you that. I'm going to make it lighter to match the lemonade that's inside my picture. There we go. And then there's dies for every single one. So that did all the work for me. I don't think I need to die cut all the pieces with you watching me. I already have them finished. So let me move those off camera and let's now work with this. You remember the strip, ugly piece to the back, right? Here, I die cut it, added my lemons, stamped some leaves. That one is going to go here. So let's go ahead and let's take our adhesive on the back side and we are going to attach that one. I'm going to move that here. I think it'll be easier for you to see. That is going to go here. And I'm just centering it in between these scoring panels. The next one is what I thought was really fun. I put that floral image and I cut it down here at the bottom. I left the adhesive free from the top on purpose. Do you remember the two little cups? Here they are. But I wanted to do something that was kind of fun with them. So I've got two lemon slices here that I die cut. And I'm going to take my paper snips and we are going to add a little slit in these because we're going to add these to our cup. It doesn't matter where, just make yourself a little slit towards the center of the lemon. And they're hard to pick up so that silicone craft sheet makes everything stick, which is wonderful. But my take your pick tool with that putty end is like genius. This now is going to go right over my cup. Oh my gosh, is this too stinking cute or what? Look at that. And then what I'm going to do is flip it over. Look, I must have reused that piece of cardstock from something else. You see some stamping on the back? You know what I say? There's two sides to every piece of cardstock, so utilize them to your benefit. If you can't see through it, use it again. The quality of Stampin' Up's cardstock is amazing, and you're going to absolutely love it. I'm going to add a little bit more adhesive here. Now that these are all ready to go, this is where they're going to get tucked. So I'm going to make one of them go here. And I'll take this one and we'll go a little bit, maybe a little bit lower next to it here. All right. And now this is going to be our next panel. And this one is going to go here. You're going to notice we're getting close now to that three inch panel here towards the center. When this card comes together, you're going to see why I opted not to put anything on these. However, the other samples I have for you does have some detail there. And I wanted to show you so that you can decide at home. This is a great project for your designer series paper. Use up those scraps. We're back to here. I added some cute lemons with some glue dots, made that nice and simple. That's gonna go here. We all know decorating is the best part, right? And then this panel I left so that I can easily be able to put a signature here. Now, if you need more room to write, make this entire panel white so that you can do more writing. You can always add a panel too to the back side of the card. Now, if you're worried because I've got that image hanging off the side, don't worry. I die cut it and I cut off the stem and then I die cut a leaf from this die set. This is one reason why I love it. They thought of everything in the accessories here. This now is going to fit on the base of the card that's here. I'm gonna show you how to put this together in just a minute. But while it's flat, let's talk about the front of the card. Now remember we said valley, mountain, valley. Let's go over this with the bone folder one more time so everything is nice and creased. If it's a little off, it will not matter. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and anchor it down with a stamp set to make our life easy. And we're going to put some designer series paper on there. Now I opted to mix and match my patterns and that's a great tip for you at home so that you can use all the paper in your package. We're gonna adhere this to the front of the card. Now my other samples have different types of closures you can add to this. This one I'm keeping simple for you and I'm just gonna add that here. I wanted this to be a slight presentation of what's inside without giving away all the panels. That's the best part, right? So let me show you something else about the dies. There's a different picture that's right here. And I did that with designer series paper. Here it is. It creates a slit when you die cut it, which makes creating a bouquet inside fantastic. Now watch this. Now I did these ahead of time. I've got some pieces here and I've got some leaves here. So I've got two here and let me bring in one more because I think I'm going to need a third. 
Let's go ahead and let's ready this. We're going to slip this right down inside the vase. I'm going to make that a little bit shorter. It's kind of like just arranging a real vase, isn't it? I kind of like that. To kind of anchor it in place, I'm going to add some adhesive just a little bit to hold those pieces intact. Now I can lay this on my silicone craft sheet where I know it's not going to move and I can finish my cluster. Now, do you remember on the inside corner of my panel, I cut away the flowers from the die? I thought that's gonna work great here to kind of fill this in. So let me show you what I did. I'm gonna use some glue dots for this. I like to peel these back so that I have one here. I am going to anchor this where I know it has a little bit of stability and I'm not gonna pull it off using my hands. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool. It's kind of like my third hand, but it allows me to get up underneath there without ripping it. So now we're gonna create a little bit of a collage. Now some of these pieces can actually be anchored here before you adhere them to the card base. It's completely up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one here and because the glue dot is peeking through the front, it's going to stick. Let's go ahead and let's take another one. Again, bracing it where we've got a little bit of cardstock there to support it. And we're gonna lift. And then this one, you know what? I think I'm gonna put this one a little bit over on this side. And you've got a little bit of wiggle room here, which is great. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it upside down and we're gonna add some dimensionals to the back side because I wanna elevate this and we'll work with the remaining pieces. I'm gonna let these do double duty for me. They're actually going to tack down these pieces where it's solid to make sure that they do not move. And I'm using them strategically to make sure that this is well balanced for mailing because I know my cards get mailed. Don't be cheap with them. They're super inexpensive and they're gonna make your cards show up beautiful once they've gone through the mailbox. Now that those are all adhered, let's go ahead and remove those paper backings. This is using the other side of my take your pick tool. Remember we used the putty earlier. This has the paper piercing tool attachment and these are interchangeable. I'm gonna bring this now here to the silicone craft sheet because I'm gonna pause. There is another die inside the die set that I absolutely love. Look at this. Now you can't appreciate the detail in here on camera, but it's left kind of like an de-embossed look in the paper. So I'm gonna determine where I want this and I'm gonna actually adhere this with adhesive. So I'm gonna work right along here near the bottom and near the top. And I'm going to place this near the bottom of the card. So I'm looking to make sure that that front tassel all is fairly centered. Now I know that this little blanket is a little bit wider than my card base, but it's gonna fit inside the envelope. We're gonna carefully pick this up and this now is going to go here. You can navigate this up and down because you wanna make sure this is within the perimeter of the card base. And then we're gonna tack that in place. Now let's talk about these other pieces. Now we can fill it in, can't we? So we're gonna flip that over. We're gonna use our dimensionals and adhere it here. This is what I call card surgery. Don't ever be afraid to add other pieces to your bouquets. I'm gonna grab my mini dimensionals just cause I have an area here I wanna make sure I stabilize. We'll remove those backings as well. And then we're gonna work this inside of here to kind of fill it. And then we're gonna take this last leaf and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come in with a glue dot we're going to pick that up and we're going to place that here where it's stable and peel that off. Now I can manhandle it. Now glue dots are so sticky, you don't ever, ever have to worry about them falling apart. If for some reason your stem is too long, you can go ahead and rip it off like I'm going to do. Or you can cut it off with your scissors. That's pretty fragile, so it's easy to do. Now I can see on this particular card, because no two are alike, this leaf is going to be trouble. So watch. I'm going to pinch it off. And then I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm gonna work them behind here. Remember, you want to make sure that this is going to all fit within the perimeter of your card. This other piece, we can take and we can totally add it if you choose. Now, I had to add some lemons to this because otherwise there's no continuity, right, to the inside of the card. So I've got my die cut lemons here. Again, I'm gonna use those glue dots to my advantage, placing them here. And then these, I decided to place down here near the bottom. And again, you can use glue dots or you can use dimensionals. Could not resist the little tiny leaves that come with this. Isn't that fantastic? And again, glue dots to the rescue. Gotta love that because they make things nice and easy and quick. And 
I'm not really much of a glue girl. I'm too heavy handed with it. I'm not patient for it to dry. So glue dots are wonderful for this kind of project because they fit beautifully and they allow you to get your project done quickly and easily. So there we go. Are you ready to put this together? All right, here comes those inside pieces we just talked about this. I'm gonna move this off to the side. Exact same thing here, valley fold first. It has to mimic the outside of the card. And then mountain, valley, mountain, valley. I know this sticks out, don't worry. These are not gonna be even, don't fret that. But I am gonna go over this with my bone folder. Now let's talk about the easiest way to put this through here. You are going to open this up and you're gonna feed it through the first hole on the right and then the second hole on the left. Fold it up so that it's closed. And then I want you to navigate this center piece looking with it closed. You see here and here, that's what you're looking for. You want about the same amount of space here and here before we adhere it. I'm gonna take my stamp and Seal Plus I'm going to come across the edges and I want to make sure that this is good and stuck. So I'm going to go all the way around the outside perimeter. And then when I'm happy with it, again, checking here and here, we're just going to close the front and press. Remember, it's very strong. Now we're going to open it. We are going to fold the back and we're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to go all the way around the outside perimeter. I like this because you don't have to hold the whole thing to line it up. And then we are going to close it and we are going to press. Again, very strong adhesive. Here is the front of your card. When you open it, these all travel between the interlocking panels to create this amazing expanding accordion card. Is this fun fold terrific? And you cannot beat how it's going to display. It's fantastic, isn't it? But wait until you see these other samples. Now for this next one, I use the bundle called Let's Go Shopping. And I have had lots of fun with this because there's coordinating dies that have actual accessories to this. Best of all, if you don't want to color and do all this detail, you're in great shape because the Lay Shop Designer Series paper uses these dies to die cut most of the buildings. So much fun. Now for the openings on this card, I use the rectangle stitch dies. Now remember the tips I gave you about die cutting so all the stitching is on the outside. Now let me show you what I did with this one. Now this one, I actually created a tie closure here on the front. And this is the designer series paper I was talking to you about. Now, while most of the dies will die cut this, and I could have used two pieces, I just fussy cut around that because that was simple. But look at this. Those dies include these adorable cascading greenery pieces. I used the loose flower embellishments there these are all parts of the designer series paper. Die cut the lantern. So let's go ahead and untie this, all tucked up underneath here, so you're gonna have lots of photos in that project sheet. Here it expands, isn't this amazing? And this is how it interlocks. This is simple black ink that I stamped off one layer to make it lighter to gray, added my awning, very simple blending. I did go a little crazy here because I couldn't help myself. It's so darn cute, it's a great miss you card. The designer series paper in this package is incredible. Okay, so that's our second one. I'm gonna move that off camera as well. And then our final one uses a different closure yet. This is from Beautiful Balloons, very, very popular because we always use balloons. Graduation, birthdays, retirement, just about any celebration has a balloon. And that's why this stamp set has been one of the best sellers this year. This time my die cut openings come from Nested Essentials, but this way. You need layering dies and these are fantastic. I think you're going to really enjoy them. This one has a belly band. So what I decided to do was create this so that it would slide off. So all my decoration is here on the front. So this is going to slide off and then this is going to open up and cascade. Oh my gosh, is this not fun? Now this is the one where I decorated all the panels, but you see some of them are kind of hidden behind here. Even if I stretch this out and I stand it up, it's really difficult to see some of the images. My recommendation to you here is if you have blue, beautiful designer series paper, don't hide it, just put paper there and call it done. Or put very narrow, tall or narrow short images in those areas. I'm still very, very happy with it. And the colors are fantastic for a masculine card. So this one of course has the belly band 
Then we have this one that ties clothes and the one that we made together, but a really beautiful card that I know that you could create with these simple steps. Now, as always, I love, love, love to know which one is your favorite. Do me a favor and pop down in the comments right now and let me know. Now, this is the time where I have been dying to share with you about my in-person event that we are doing again this year. We did this last year where we can all get together. It is called Party with the Stamp Studio, and we want to meet you, and we want you to meet one another. This event is held in the Tampa Bay area. Head over to my website, and in the red menu bar at the top, click Online Events, and then in the drop-down, Party with the Stamp Studio. It will be Saturday to September 23rd in 2023. It's a full day event for $45. Of course, we're stamping. Gina and I, our spouses, our parents, and the entire Stamp Studio team will be there for you to meet. There's open Q&A. We're going to have lunch together. It's going to be a great, great day. So plan a trip no matter where you're coming from. We have people flying from all over, and we would love to see you. Registration ends, as you can see here on the screen, on September 8th. Space is limited, and space is already selling out very, very quickly. So please head over to my website and jump onto that opportunity. If you haven't heard about Stamp Studio memberships, you're going to want to give this a try for $5 a month. I design a card that comes right to your inbox every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time with a project I don't share anywhere else. It doesn't matter what country you live in, and you are free to use these projects however you want, including the tutorial. And if that's not enough, there is a level two. You're going to get a fun fold, discount in my PDF tutorial library, and we do five random giveaways every single month. And if you've enjoyed tonight's video, give it a thumbs up here on YouTube and mark your calendar. I will be back with you next Monday, August 14th, 2023. Mark your calendar for 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.